We're coming into autumn and that can be a great time to capture some beautiful wildlife photos. So, let's talk about it. This is your Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're gonna talk about wildlife photography and five tips to take better wildlife photos and ultimately end up with better wildlife photos at the end of your shoot because there's nothing worse than going out to take wildlife photos and not finding animals or birds or whatever it is you're looking for, you know, not coming away with sharp photos or they're extra noisy or all that kind of stuff. So hopefully we can avoid all of that and we can talk about how to get great wildlife photos. So tip number one is to check and change your settings. Now I have Whoa! Let me tell you, when I go out and take wildlife photos, I will set, you know, the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO. I'll often pop ISO onto auto so that it can quickly change to expose correctly as I'm kind of moving the camera around. But I will often, you know, forget, or I used to forget to change the shutter speed between different shots or adjust what I was doing. And sometimes that can lead to terrible results. So for example, if you're shooting a bird or an animal in motion, you want a much higher shutter speed than if you're shooting a bird or an animal that is stationary, that is static. You know, I'll often shoot at one one thousandth of a second for a bird in flight or an animal moving quickly. But if it's just an animal or a bird sitting still, I will start bringing that shutter speed down. Don't get me wrong, I'll take one initially with the higher shutter speed because I want to make sure I get that photo and I want it to be nice and sharp, but I'll start bringing that shutter speed down and taking additional photos so that I can lower that ISO. So I can bring that down as low as I can to reduce the amount of noise in the photo. Now, that is something that I really have learned over my time of shooting wildlife photos is to check and change your settings. It really is just worth having a very quick look at those settings. Even if you pull the camera up, just have a look through the viewfinder, just check those settings and make sure they're not set to something ridiculous. Make sure you haven't got your exposure compensation to something like plus three or minus three or something like that, unless you, you know, deliberately want it like that. And just, you know, make sure you're not shooting F11 or some 1 60th of a second shutter speed. It's worth just taking that half a second to check before you take the photo and then to adjust them depending on the kind of photo that maybe you're going for. Tip number two is to start tracking your subject before you take the photo. If you start tracking it and you're looking through the viewfinder and you're watching your subject move, you can start either doing burst shooting to just sort of try and nail at least one good sharp image. And that's how we do things with very fast moving animals is just burst it because you wanna make sure you get that good photo. But if you've got a slightly slower moving animal, maybe a deer, maybe something that's just moving reasonably slowly through the brush, I like to just track it before I take the photo because I just want to wait for the light to be right, for the animal to do something of interest, for it to look up, anything like that. So tracking it before you take the photo and just watching it for that perfect moment can be great. Now, I would still probably burst shoot when it gets towards that perfect moment, but you know, I've been in loads of situations where suddenly the sun will come out and there's great light. Suddenly it's backlit. Suddenly the animal will look up and look over at me. Perfect, that's all I wanted, and I'll just burst shoot through that moment, rather than just up, take the photo, check it, take the photo, check it. I would much rather actually just, just watch the animal for a minute, make sure I'm getting that perfect moment. Tip number three is just to get to the eye level of the animal that you're shooting. Now, of course, this doesn't work for birds in flight, but if it's an animal like a deer or a bear or whatever it might be on the ground, a rabbit, you know, you get nice and low, it just looks fantastic. You are now viewing the world at the level that they are viewing the world. You're much more likely to get something along the lines of eye contact, which can look really nice, that can make or break a photo, but you are absolutely in their world and it just looks fantastic. It's such a great way to capture you know, a photo of an animal out and about, whether it's in a forest, whether it's on safari, whether it's in a zoo, anywhere at all, getting to their eye level just really helps with the composition and the feel of that photo. Tip number four is to make sure you're checking your backgrounds. Now this is a big one that people don't always think about with wildlife photography, but realistically backgrounds are probably as important as the actual subject of your photo. And all it takes usually, especially when you're using long lenses, is to move a tiny amount, one step to the left. Just change your perspective ever so slightly and you will completely change that background. Now, if you're taking photos in a nature park or your local park or whatever it might be, 
That can mean removing buildings from the background, removing people from the shot, and getting a nice, either a clean background or more of an environmental background. So that could mean that you're getting a nice blurred out, just green or brown or whatever it might be, background. No problem. That looks great. That really, you know, isolates the subject, really pulls focus onto them. Or you can go for a more environmental background, which is where you're just including different plants or parts of the environment that are kind of make sense with the creature. They kind of make sense with the animal. So if that's in the snow, that can look fantastic. Or the forest, you have a little bit of forest in the background. But just being aware of your background will really enhance that photo. You know, yes, the subject is the subject but the background is going to give context to everything else. And the final tip, which is tip number five, is to think about your compositions when you're taking the photo and actually to use your autofocus point to force yourself to compose in a certain way. So once I kind of find the subject, I will start composing it up and then I will move my autofocus point over where I want the animal's head or eye to be in the photo. And then if the animal moves or if I move, it kind of forces me, pushes me to keep the composition that I had chosen for the photograph. And it really makes me think about the composition that's kind of locked in. Because when things are moving fast and things are going on, you can kind of forget about that and just sort of snap, snap, snap. And then you get back and you've lost a little bit of the animal out of frame or you know it's not composed particularly well. And you can crop if you've shot a little bit wider and that can look really good. But otherwise it's a great way of forcing yourself to think about that composition and to make you get the composition that you chose for the photo. And almost always, there is almost never a situation where this isn't true. Having any kind of composition in mind is better than no composition in mind. Almost every single time. And that's certainly true for wildlife photography as well. So that's five tips to get better wildlife photos. So hopefully that can help you capture some awesome wildlife photos this autumn. There's loads to photograph in the autumn. So I'm pretty excited. Right, I'm not gonna actually, right now it's raining. It's not very nice out there. It's actually, it's one, it's one of those days where it's raining quite a lot. Too much maybe for photography. But I'm excited, you know, as the leaves start to change to go out and photograph all of that. So if you have any tips for the wildlife stuff we've been talking about, or if you'd like to see anything in a future Tutorial Tuesday, let me know down in the comments, because we'll do our best to get to every single one that you suggest. And of course, I love seeing your tips as well. You have great insight on a lot of this stuff. So I'd love to see that. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.